Hello and welcome to another episode of Melon's Better Driving Videos. Today we're going to be discussing the uh, the way that you can become a racing driver and how I would recommend to go about that and uh, essentially a couple of tips, guidance and pointers and rules that I think will help you if you wish to become a racing driver. And I want to start off with a bit of a disclaimer, if you will, in saying that you're not likely to become a professional racing driver but you may become a racing driver in the amateur sense. You're not going to be, you know, the um, Formula One driver necessarily. It's not very likely, because that's going to be just your top tenth of a percent, if you will. It's going to have that. The rest, it's not really very likely for that, you know. The top tenth of a percent, maybe I could see them becoming professional racing drivers, but the rest of the 99.9% .9 of people, it's not likely. You're not likely to become a racing driver. And that's just a quick disclaimer. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm just saying, you know, this is not your definitive guide to becoming a professional racing driver. This is a guide to becoming a racing driver. This is how you can become a rally driver. This is how you can become a racing driver. This is how you start out as a racing driver whichever chosen motorsport you prefer. Now, saying so, saying that you're not likely to become a professional racing driver, that does not take away from being a racing driver. It just means that you're not going to be paid. So if you're trying to think like, oh, I want to be a racing driver for a career, well, you better start practicing day in, day out, 24-7, because you're going to have some stiff competition in order to do that. You know, you're going to have the Formula 1 driver types who are so flawless and so talented that there's really no answer for it. You have nothing. You, you are just not going to be on their level unless you practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. Now, with that said, the first thing I want to talk about is practice, okay? Sponsors are the way that you're going to get into racing. And the way that you're going to satisfy them, you're going to make yourself look good to your sponsors, the way that you're going to get sponsors and keep sponsors is by being fast and by being marketable, okay? And in order to be fast, you need practice. Practice is expensive. If you want to be a racing driver, go and get a high paying job. And I'm sorry to put it bluntly like that, but you know, you really need to be out there at the tracks driving a lot, or even at least playing simulating racing games. And sim racing games, track days, karting, whatever you're going to do, it's all expensive. You need to get out there, you need the experience, you've got to know what you're doing. The only way to do that is to spend money. I hate to say it, but it's true. That's how it is. Go and do it. That's your biggest, biggest piece of advice is to go and get the practice. A lot of the top level Formula One racing drivers, they're there because they're wealthy as hell. You know, their families are super rich and the kid just said, I want to be a racing driver. The parents just snapped their fingers and out came the butler and he said, I will make your son a racing driver because you asked me to do that and I'm your butler, I'm your slave, whatever, I'm going to make it happen because you have so much money that it's easy. I don't want to portray wealth as being, you know, that snobby, but sometimes it really is like that. Oh. Don't you spin on me. <laughs> Anyways. Before that happened, I was saying, you know, it's not likely 
that you're going to get into racing unless you can afford to get out there, get practice, and become fast for your sponsors to actually receive good race results. Now, I'm not going to say that that's the only thing that matters though. Being fast is certainly a part of it, but there's something else as well that I want to tell everybody that's equally important is more than just about becoming fast, but fast and marketable. You want your sponsors to look at you and say, there's a good salesman. There's the guy who's going to sell our product, because that's what they want you to do. Oh, oh. That was a little too fast into that chicane. Anyways. Your sponsors, they want you to be marketable. They want you to be the guy who will sell their products and help them to make money. Because they have stuff that they want to uh, buy and stuff that they want to do. They have their goals and they have reasons for wanting to be wealthy, to be well off. They have whatever they're doing, okay? I'm not going to assume what they do. I'm not going to try to tell you who they are, what they're like. Every sponsor is different, every business owner is different, every business manager is different. But essentially, they're sponsoring you because they want that advertising money. They want the money that comes from marketing. Now, the way that you can reward them for sponsoring you is to be a good advertising role model. You know, you are a guy who is sponsored, essentially paid or hired in order to sell their products. And I want to give you a couple of examples. Okay? I want to start off with Oliver Gavin. Oliver Gavin, in case you don't know who he is, he is a Corvette factory racing factory driver, you know? Corvette Racing hired him, he's their factory driver, he's the fastest, the best driver that they have, in my opinion. The thing with Oliver Gavin, though, however, is that he knows more about Corvettes than just about any person in the world, anywhere except maybe Ron Fellows. You know, the, these two guys, they know so much about the cars they love being the Corvettes, that it's easy for them to sell the car because they can say, you know, it's got this much power, it's got this, it's got that, the brakes are this size. They're car salesmen extraordinaire. They sell cars because they race them, they drive them, they breathe them, they live them, they're, you know, that car is the most important thing in their life, pretty much. Maybe their family, their wife, their kids, maybe that's more important to them, but you can tell that they care about the cars a lot and that speaks volumes to the passionate enthusiast who's saying you know i'm having a midlife crisis and i want to buy a car and which car should it be and then they look at corvette and the corvette owners are so passionate and so enthusiastic that guess what they can sell the cars easily because they're good cars with a big factory backing and good support and the people they know about them, they have a good passion, and it really is exciting to talk to somebody who knows all that stuff, and who says all that stuff, and does all that stuff. Now, at the opposite end of the spectrum, you have some drivers who really, they're not good at marketing, and Kimi Raikkonen is a fantastic driver, but his heart isn't in the whole being a marketable, sponsorable driver. <laughs> he's sponsored because he's hilarious, but he doesn't do well with advertising. He, you can tell that he's reading from a teleprompter or that he's reading from script. That he just doesn't care about what he's saying. He doesn't care about the product. He doesn't care. But that's because he's Kimi. That's. Kimi Raikkonen is Kimi Raikkonen, you're not going to change him. He sleeps before races, he sleeps through races, he sleeps through practice sessions, he does whatever he does. You're not going to change him. But the thing is, that that doesn't reflect well on anybody who isn't Kimi Raikkonen. Be 
because Kimi Raikkonen, that's his personality, that's who he is, that's how he is, and you're not going to change it. But if you try to be like Kimi Raikkonen, without the sense of humor and without the just awesome comments and awesome personality of Kimi Raikkonen, then you're not going to pull it off to the same benefit. You're not going to, you know, have the same results. So, you have an example of somebody who's really good at marketing stuff in Oliver Gavin, and then you have somebody who's really not good at marketing in Kimi Raikkonen, except that Kimi Raikkonen does it in a sarcastic sort of, I'm fast and I know it and I'm just going to sleep whenever I want and read from a teleprompter because I just don't care and I'm just here because I love it because it's fun. Right? That, that's his personality, you can't change it, but no other person could really pull that off the way that Kimi Raikkonen does. And that's, uh, that's pretty well fine. But, there's your quick tips for becoming a racing driver. Practice, become fast, become marketable, practice selling cars, and really know what sets you apart from everybody else because if you are special and the sponsors are going to eat it up because they're going to say wow this person is the first woman to win this championship or she could become the first woman to win that championship that would be awesome if we sponsored her and that's sort of the idea behind somebody like Christina Nielsen She's an amazing driver, she's fast, she's actually a talented female driver, which is something that I've been waiting for for a long time, and I'm a huge fan of Christina Nielsen for it, because she is the female driver that we needed for a long time, because she's not the Danica Patrick type that's not winning races, not receiving good results. She's leading the championship in the Tudor United Sports Car Championship. And she almost won it last year, but she finished second due to rotten luck. Now, the thing is, you've got somebody like that who clearly, clearly is uh, very, very, very good at marketing and so on. Because she can market herself as somebody who could be the first woman to win that championship, but it's because she's actually a talented driver and she can use the two as a pair between being a good advertiser and marketer and a good driver. It's a very, very powerful package that makes her a very good racing driver as an entire, you know, how do I say, sponsorship receiving machine that she's going to have sponsors just lining up to have her because she could be the first woman to win that championship. And if she is, guess what? The doors are open for her pretty much anywhere she goes because she's breaking the stereotype and she's actually a talented driver and she proved it time and time and time again. And that's what's important. But I hope that you can see from what I'm telling you right now, that being special, being unique is good in terms of marketability. You can sell yourself by being someone who's unique and not the same as every other person out there. Because that's what sells stuff. You know? Having been awesome is the best way to be awesome. So, having an awesome outlook and being unique and being interesting and being exciting and all that stuff. It sells stuff a lot better. So, there's how you become a racing driver. This has been Melon's Better Driving Videos. Subscribe for more if you like the, uh, the channel. Like this video if you like the video. Comment. Tell me what you think of it. Share. Send me your suggestions for what you'd like to see a video written about. And, uh, I'm just about out of fuel, so uh, have a good day.